So with that in mind, uh, if we if we think about RNG and we think about Dom Juan, Nelson, do you think that Dom Juan is the the MSI favorite coming through, or do you think that RNG has fixed a lot of the problems that they had earlier in the LPL playoffs that caused them to kind of get bodied by FPX and drop into the losers bracket? I mean, I I think I'm I, I still think Dom Juan is the most stable team. I think the difference between the Korean Korean teams and Chinese teams at international events is that. Of course, you know, the early game, the aggression early game, the Korean teams can match it. I mean, Damwon can. I'm not sure about the rest, but Damwon can, right? They have showed at Rose. But the thing is, after they get a lead, they just have a chokehold on, on you. They just, they don't give you any chance to come back. You know, they just play defensively. They they allocate their lanes defensively because they know that they have a lead and they're not going to lose if they just go even after getting the lead, you know? And for LPL, LPL teams, I feel... Yeah, they know how to get a lead, but after they get a lead, they still like to, you know, win faster. It's definitely true of a lot of the matches I watched that that had some really crazy skirmishes that seemed pretty unnecessary. <laughs> I, I mean, I think RNG has technically you you have a good matchup against Khan because, but I haven't seen RNG play different stuff at top lane for for a while in the playoffs. I'm not sure if they would practice it, but I think they should because. I mean, if your top can play every champion in the game, then you should abuse it. I you know, do. one thing I've always thought is like a meta hole that Koreans miss as well, the elite teams. One thing I noticed about Koreans is because unfortunately some of them still do seem to be locked in the mentality of like season four to season seven, where it was like you play the perfect... Basically, the premise back then was you don't gamble. You just play the correct scenarios where I know I'm... And in fact, you don't even take the 50-50. You go for like, I want to be like 65%, 70% that this is the right move. And you try and play the game like that. One area I always thought was totally misunderstood, by the way, and I'll now tie this, yes, to my fucking experience experiencing gold motherfuckers are you ready this is some straight <laughs> fire analogy because here's why monty everyone knows the reason i'm in gold is because no matter how good i get on pike because it's the only champion i play i pick it i but i pick it at all times money i don't care what the other the team could have five champions that destroy it i pick it every time and go this is going to be a hard game and then I start, and the rest of my team obviously go, but might dodge this, but whatever. So when I pick it, right, I can tell you, Monty, as a selfish little cunt who doesn't play for the team, I like certain skirmishes where I know I'm going to die because my champion benefits from getting kills. There's one area Koreans never understood. Dude, what if my comp is one where actually even just trading evenly in a skirmish gets the right kills onto the right carries that then turns into items and makes you win the game? Dude, Koreans, that's like a hole where they definitely miss it in the meta. Like, I've seen some of them with a comp like that just play perfectly and only go, like, and never get a kill as a result. Like that, that's one of those areas where I feel like China was ahead of the meta. Like, if it's the right carry getting the kill, it's fine for us to trade. Tell you what, your jungler can have those two kills. I'll have my AD carry having two kills out of a skirmish. Sure. Like, that's not even an even trade, guys. Like, people, people, it's it's cause people unfortunately dismissed like LPL out of hand. It's only now, now that they've won, and we have to acknowledge that they're the best. People sort of are trying to figure out what were they doing, you know? It's, it's even, it's even things that I find interesting about the LPL because it's not even, it is certainly what you're talking about, like not getting the I mean, kills that's a layman's the, version. The right. Yeah, come on. Yeah. But, but it's also <coughs> occasionally what I've seen is that they will force like a, a strategy that they implement is that is forcing fights even around the, the minion waves. Right. So like if you can draw people into an even trade, but there's a bunch of minions that are dying to a turret at the same time, that is still a, an advantageous state. So if you see those opportunities, LPL is just much more aggressive about taking them, which certainly can work out in various situations. The problem is, is that if you take too many of those fights, eventually, like if you if you 50 50 it too many times, eventually, you're just not going to be able to control the outcome. And that's, that's kind of where it gets a little dicey, right? What do you the question think, is the you must have some thoughts versus this, the risk. Yeah, you must have some thoughts on this, Nelson. It's a bit meta. You know, it's more like an LS stream discussion, but without two people who can't get jobs in the LEC going, yeah, I sort of, I'm going to find a way to agree, LS. You know, so <laughs> go ahead. You can be the LS in this scenario, Nelson. You know. <laughs> I'm too cheeky, Adam. That's my problem. I'm entirely too cheeky. I'm irascible. You know, can... <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, you, 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 you can see just from the way Alpha plays the early laning phase, right? In the first two or three waves. Like, it, f I think if, like, for example, if I had to give an example, it would be like, just imagine if any, any, and you put an any ball lane and a Chinese ball lane, and you just both let them play like Zaya or Khan. And, and so what's going to happen is, you know, of course, both Zayas and both Rakans are going to press W and go in, right? And the any AD carry is going to get hit by the W. 
and he will think it's fine because he trusts his support to lend up the W as well. But what's going to happen is the Chinese AD carry would flash at level 1 before he even hit any minion, just so that he can win the trade. And when I win the trade, I can snowball to snow it, like snowball the lead to something else. So I use my flash to get a 200 HP lead when the game starts, you know, something like that. And they but, know how to play around. But the it. risk is obviously that the jungler comes by yeah. later <laughs> and fucks you yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, but like, 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 what, like what I said just now, right? So yeah, yeah. what if what if you can track the camps and if the jungler gangs you when his camps on the other side is up, it's fine. Yes. It doesn't matter because it's, it's an even trade. So it doesn't matter. That's true. I that's think that's, that's, that's what the West doesn't think about because there are so many really bad gangs. That's one of the reasons, Nelson, by the way, why I always said we've got to stop pretending like LEC is G2 Esports with perks as AD carry. Because, by the way, guys, those were the best team anyone Western ever produced. And even they used to get fucking toiled and turned apart by all the LPL teams. So bad news. If that was our greatest ever team, they couldn't fuck with what the LPL was cooking up. I'm not feeling Mad Lions to win MSI, boys. To know about you. I, I, think <laughs> it's, I think it's just the work ethic. Because a lot of when I... I, I I'm not going to speak about the European teams right now because I haven't seen their scrims, but I have in the last year seen a number of, of NA scrims. And for me, it's just the discipline of day in and day out doing things like jungle timers or, or summoner timers and like stuff just having... Stuff that's boring. Yeah, stuff that's not yeah, sexy. It's boring you just have to shit. do it. Like there, there just isn't the same level of rote repetition in practice about like these types of intricacies in the game that then allows you to understand them well enough to make plays off of them, right? By the way, if you're an ERL player who plays the game at a semi-pro to pro level and you're a jungler or a support listening to this show, I'm not trolling. Right this moment, start doing this now. Do what yep. Monty said, play with like a second monitor where you put, and put the timers on or a notepad. If you just do that, you will that will get back to coaches and tell you what, if a coach hears that and he already was considering you, that's like pawn to a coach. If he hears that you do that of your own initiative, your value is going to go way higher just for anecdotally alone. Own. For real, it could actually be like a game changer yeah. for your player. Oh, 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 only works in EU. <laughs> Wouldn't work in NA, of course. Yeah, they'd go. You haven't even got seventy-five thousand Twitter followers. How would I ever sign you <laughs> to my professional team? You're you're American. Uh, we're going to import some players.